Hi everyone, this is Dawn. It is April 24th. I just made a video yesterday, um, but this one, you know, again, I was uh, guided to um, share this with you today. I am going to uh, read the story of the prodigal son. Let me give you just a quick um, update on um, the last 18 hours. Um, you know, so after I made, made the video yesterday morning, um, yesterday was a, a, a significant day, um, as may, maybe uh, some of you, at least the ones that are on the same kind of um, point of the journey that I am, you know, probably felt this. Um, and I won't go into a lot of detail about that, but clearly there's a, quite a lot going on right now in terms of um, individuals who are called to this path, and particularly the divine masculine right now, really grappling with um, having a lot of inner anxiety, um, seeking to make choices um, and uh, for their lives that feel aligned for them and really understanding more. There's more and more greater awareness and um, that can lead to, um, you know, a deeper connection internally and ultimately transformation in their lives, uh, in in you know the way that is um, most aligned for their path. Um, last night, so um, first of all, I it's like I've been avoiding making a particular video for my letters to the church channel for like I don't know months, probably years. Um, but anyway, I haven't had the channel that long, but. Um, uh, this uh, last night, I, there was no getting around it, and Jesus like, was like, "Go to the video and turn it on and speak." And so I made the video on sacred sexuality. Um, it's a bit long; it's an hour long, um, and it's specifically to those um, affiliated with um, the church. But if you're interested, you can check that out. Um, just giving you that as context, though, because I had you know, sort of like a very, um, <sighs> um, you know, a very intense. Um, in my own journey um, evening last night. And then when I went to bed, um, I wasn't um, sleeping. I knew that was partly because of what's going on in my own personal dynamic um, situation on the path toward union, um, which is quite interesting as we all know. Um, and at the same time, <clears throat> um, I felt, you know, like I was being, you know, sort of asked to be very, very still. And that's that's happened quite a bit lately, so I'm used to it and I was going with it. And then I, I heard very clearly that it was to hold the space for all the sons and daughters. Um, and I was like, okay, and didn't really know what that meant. And then this morning, um, so I laid there for a long time. And um, this morning I got up and I had decided I was going to record another video with a um, um, a passage of scripture for my other channel, and um, I just, you know, got the the this series of events in the shower actually, and then, um, you know, I heard that um, a, a particular phrase in my um, in my head, and uh, there was I knew there was a song I was supposed to find, and um, interestingly, the passage that I was going to originally record um, is from Luke chapter chapter fourteen. Um, and chapter 15, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but chapter 15 is the story of the prodigal son. And this song, so I was given um, a phrase and I, I Googled it, and this song came up that I've actually never heard. I don't know how I missed it though, because it was apparently in those um, vampire diary movies or something like that. Anyway, it was called Come Home by uh, One Republic. Beautiful song. I will link to that at the end of this video um, and invite you to watch it. Um, but um, so I, I listened to the song and I was like, that is beautiful and had my moment um, and then um, got on about my day. I always draw a card um, for my Mother Mary deck for me and um, sometimes I'll draw one for the collective and I did that this morning. So I drew the card for me, which was quiet, um, stillness, and then I drew the card for the collective, which was father. Um, and I was like, well, there's that tie again to the prodigal son. So got my breakfast, um, turned on um, the, um, well, first I looked at a book I have, and right there in the middle of this book that is not anything um, religious or anything like that, that is the word prodigal. And then I turn on, in the first video I watch, the person who's speaking mentions the prodigal, <laughs> the prodigal son, and I'm like, wow. And I immediately made the connection to the sons and daughters. We are the sons and daughters. and. Oh my gosh, I'm going to just like tear up because I've always, as many of us, I think, had this vision of two children running, you know, through a field. And that's, that's me and my beloved. And our lives have not felt like that. Um, or I know my life has not felt like that. And I, you know, venture 
um, it's not a difficult leap to make the guess that perhaps his life has not always felt like running through a field of flowers um, with great joy. And that's the vision that I have for all of us. And um, so after I you know, kind of um, saw the word prodigal so many times, I just felt um, once again, you know, and I'm feeling all my like, oh my gosh, what did I do with that other video that I just released? But, um, but anyway, um, it'll be fine. And um, so I felt really guided to share with you this morning um, this, uh, this passage um, as we hold the space for all the sons and daughters, all of those who are on their way back home. Um, whatever that means for them, because this ultimately is a journey back to our whole self and our soul self, back to the fullness of who we are, and allowing that journey to then lift us up into more and more alignment with um, with the divine plan, with God, with life itself because life is the journey and we are here to have life and to have it to the full so um let me go ahead and um share with you so like in luke 14 which is the chapter before um the prodigal son i just really want to quickly touch on this because at the end of chapter 14 what's happening is there are a lot of crowds traveling with jesus and uh, he says to them something shocking. He says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, Everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but it loses its saltiness. If it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is, neither, it is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. So that's what Jesus is teaching in this parable <clears throat> the, um, before he moves into um, teaching, um, or the way it's presented in Luke anyway. The next uh, series of, of parables is the parable of the lost sheep. Um, and, you know, that, that's the, the, the uh, hundred sheep and, and, you know, if one of them is lost and what happens, does he, he leaves the 99 in the open country and goes after the lost sheep until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts his arms ar around and puts the, the little lamb on his shoulders and he goes home and he calls his friends and neighbors and he says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in the same way, Jesus said, that there uh, will be more rejoicing in heaven over one who repents than the 99 righteous who do not need to repent. So then he goes in, so that's the parable of the lost sheep. Then he goes into the parable of the lost coin. You know, the woman loses the coin. What does she do? She looks for it and she finds it and she rejoices. And he says, in the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one who repents. And then it is the parable of uh, or the prodigal son story that uh, most of us are familiar with. I will read it in case you uh, don't remember how that story goes. This is uh, Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 11. Jesus continued. Again, this is continued. It's a continuation. And I do believe that that part is accurate. He was building up to this. And this is a story that uh, has many facets. We often see it in a very um, straightforward way. And that has a great truth and um, value. But I want to ask you, as you think of the story, remember that we are all of these. We are the father. We are the one, the prodigal who's run away and spent all the money. And we are the younger son as well and just consider all of those perspectives because wholeness and coming home to our whole self means embracing all of that honoring when we have been all of those players um, and um, and when we have uh, 
looked for what was lost and rejoiced and when we have not done that, when we have turned our backs and when we have, um, you know, squandered um, something precious or when we have uh, been resentful because look at what I have done. I have, I have done everything, um, you know, and I have been in each of these um, places at various times as many of us have. Okay, so the parable um, of the lost son is what it's called in this particular translation, but the prodigal son. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, sent off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out as a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. You never, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So I hope that um, that speaks to you uh, in you know some way today and that um, you find a way to hold that space for all that is within you, all that is being made complete within you and all that is being made complete right now in our world. Um, and all that will come from that because we are just at the beginning. Um, and that's the last thing I just want to leave us with is that, um, m you know, many of us can, um, you know, see an end goal in this particular journey of um, sacred partnership or union. Um, and um, the end, the end is always only the beginning again. And so um i love you all and have a wonderful beautiful day um i love how beautiful it is um all the roles that we have played um the divine feminine the divine masculine and 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 all the space we have held for one another uh it's really magnificent enjoy the song i will put a link um, to the video online um to the song that um i listened to much love